With just a few days left before E-Day, speculation about who's up and who's down is inevitable. Erin Kelly is our go-to for insight on where things are headed. She's the CEO of Advanced Symbolics, Inc., and she joins us now from the nation's capital for word on what the artificial intelligence known as Polly is saying. And Erin, I don't know, should we put people out of their misery already? Are you prepared to make a call right now? Yes, Polly is prepared to make a call after this weekend. There's no doubt that this is going to be a PC majority government. How do you know? Well, we the, everything is there. Polly is saying that the lowest seat count that, uh, as of right now, that Doug Ford, that the PCs would get is 67 seats, um, and as high as 84 seats, 85 seats, and the trend is toward the PCs. So throughout this weekend, week we've seen people switching their vote where they were undecided. Now, we still have 28 ridings that are too close to call. Uh, however, the PCs are leading and comfortably leading in enough seats that we can say definitively that they will get a majority government. So we remind everyone 63 is a majority and you've got even the low end of their seat count at 67. So even if it's a, a quote unquote off night, you still see them winning. Where are, well, why don't we do this now? Let's go region by region and see how this thing is playing out right now. Where are the Tories the strongest in the province? At 9.05 around the GTA. That's definitely the strongest area, but they're also strong in a lot of the rural areas. Um, so they're not strong in eastern Ontario. They're not strong in my hometown. That's where they're not strong. Uh, but they definitely are strong around the GTA and in some southwestern Ontario rural areas. And the plaintiff call from both the Liberals and New Democrats that, that if you want to stop Doug Ford and more than 60% of the electorate does want to stop Doug Ford, you got to vote for us. That just hasn't cut through yet, eh? That is too late. So what, what you will be deciding at this point is whether the Liberals or the NDP will form the official opposition because that is definitely still very much in play. They're tied right now. Hmm. All right, let's go into the 416. Lake Ontario in the south. There's the west end of Etobicoke in the west and Scarborough in the east. Steeles Avenue in the north. How does that look to you, Aaron, like it's breaking down on Thursday night? Well, it depends. So that's a so in Scarborough, we're seeing the NDP is um, in contention. We'll put it that way. It's not like strong, strong, but in Scarborough, they, the NDP and the Liberals still do have opportunities. Um, Nine oh five, the Liberals in Oakville are within contention, and in Missis some parts of Mississauga. So it, it those are the ridings that are very close. Um, but if you go north of Toronto, we're seeing definitely PC um, and, and a lot of those writings in and around the suburbs of Toronto are definitely PC. All right, let's so stay it, with it the... it varies by writing. Sure. Let's stay with the 416 for, for a little bit more here. And uh, let's start in the northeast. We'll go to Scarborough. Scarborough Centre, which was a riding last time that was decided by uh, fewer than 2,000 votes. And there's no former sitting member running for re-election there, so it's an open seat this time. How's it looking? Scarborough Centre is... So the gap between the PCs... So it's a battle between the PCs and the Liberals, and the gap is about 7.4% with the PCs in the lead. So that should remain comfortably Conservative on Thursday, then? 7.4 is... Yes. The margin of error is 6% and lower. It's still in contention. At 7%, you're starting to get more comfortable. Okay, let's check so, some more so, writings. Easy. Some more writings of interest here. Uh, Kathleen Wynne ran last time in Don Valley West. She is obviously retired. And there is a new Liberal candidate there, Stephanie Bowman, who's running against the former Chief of Police of Toronto, Mark Saunders. What does Polly have to say about the tightness of that riding? It was, <clears throat> I think Ms. Wynne won it last time by about 100 votes, so it was very tight. Yeah, that's still a Liberal. The Liberals are leading, the PCs are in second place, and the gap there is 7.9%. Hmm. All right, let's come around to the Niagara Peninsula. Niagara Falls, where Wayne Gates is the former sitting member seeking re-election. What is Pauly saying about the tightness of Niagara Falls? Niagara Falls is the tightest riding in the province right now. The NDP is leading the PCs, but by 0.5%. So that's really statistically... It is neck and neck between, interesting, the PCs and the NDP. That is interesting because that's a, that's a former, well, that seat's bounced around among all three parties, but certainly of late, it's been a liberal NDP fight. You say the Tories are in contention there now. Is that right? Yes. Hmm. Okay. That's different. 
Uh, all right, let's bring up, um, Sheldon, let's do the 905 now. And the 905, of course, these are the ridings that go all the way from uh, Hamilton, Niagara region uh, in the southwest, wrapping around Lake Ontario, all the way out to Durham region in the east, Halton region, Peel region, York region. Uh, the 905 decides elections because it's almost always in play. Uh, how's it looking right now, Aaron? Well, it depends on the riding. So in, uh, and, and a few of it, these are tight ridings too. So Hamilton West, which you mentioned, PCs are in the lead, NDP second, but it's only a 0.7% gap. So it's not very close. Same thing with Mississauga, parts of Mississauga are really, really uh, close. So um, let's see here, Mississauga, Center, for example, the PCs are in the lead over the Liberals, but it's 0.6%. So these are election night, and you know, if you're sitting on the fence and wondering if you should show up, if you're in that region, well, if you're in any region, you should show up to vote. But these are very, very tight regions, and so the vote is going to sway it one way or the other. Um, so Mississauga Center, PCs, Mississauga East, Cooksville, also PC, 5.6% Liberal, so it's getting a little bit firmer. Uh, Aaron Mills, 7.2% PC again. So Miss Mississauga is going largely PC, but there are still parts um, like Mississauga Center that are a little bit more in contention. Okay, I got to follow um, up on... Oh, that's exactly what I was going to ask you, because the parties have all spent a lot of time in Brampton. Last time out, it went three Tories... No, sorry, three New Democrats, two Tories. What's it looking like right now? It's looking Tory right now, uh, with the exception of Brampton East, which is NDP in the lead over the PCs, but only by 2%. So Brampton is still in contention. The others are pretty tightly uh, progressive conservative. Yeah, the five Brampton ridings have really been a focus of all the major parties in this campaign. I know uh, Sarah Singh, for example, in center, won it by a couple of hundred votes last time. Uh, Kevin Yard in north won it by a few hundred votes last time. He's not the candidate again for the NDP this time. So it was pretty super close there. Uh, I do need to ask you, while we're talking about the 905, about the race that everybody's going to have their eyes on Thursday night, and that, of course, is the Liberal leader's own former seat, um, defeated by Michael Tobolo four years ago. That's a Liberal NDP, excuse me, a Liberal Tory struggle. How tight is it right now? Vaughn Woodbridge is the PCs are in the lead by just over 5%. So it's going to be a... a a very nail biter. It's going to be a nail biter for Stephen Del Duca whether he wins that riding. And the margin of error on that polling of five percent is what? It's ninety. The margin of error. So it's a ninety-five percent confidence. Then the margin of error is plus or minus two percent. So, but you know he is the leader. So we'll give him a little bit of. He might get that sympathy vote. Uh, Kathleen Wynne even won her seat when the Liberals are decimated the last time. So. I, I would still say that one's in contention. And, you know, last week when we talked, it was 2%. Now it's 5%. So the, the momentum seems to be going away from Mr. Del Duca. He had a very bad week, by the way. So, hmm. you know, uh, he's, he doesn't have a lot of time to make it up. Right. Now, three days still to go. And obviously, um, I well remember in 1984, there was something they called the Quadra Factor, where John Turner was the only liberal elected in British Columbia on the federal election that night in Vancouver Quadra, and it was a strong sympathy vote to, while, while the Liberals were being decimated everywhere else in the country, uh, he managed to win Vancouver Quadra. So you never know, that kind of factor may be at play in Vaughan Woodbridge as well. Let's, uh, Sheldon, you want to bring up Southwestern Ontario? Southwestern Ontario used to be, uh, you know, in, in the urban parts, um, a bit of a graveyard for Conservatives, but uh, perhaps is another indication of how things have changed. What are you seeing now? Uh, still a graveyard. Um, we're seeing London, the three ridings in London are NDP with the Conservatives in second place. So the, it's actually more of a graveyard for the Liberals. Um, but we've got uh, the NDP leading most of them. The one that's closest is London North Centre. That one's only a 3.9% margin of error between, or difference between the NDP and the PC. So that's the one where the PCs probably have the, the best shot. I'm hearing that the Conservatives are actually doing well enough to potentially pick up some seats down in the Windsor area where they have not won seats in maybe 70 years, uh, if you talk about the city of Windsor itself. Now, are my sources good on that, or do I need to go back at them and give them H-E double hockey sticks? 
Uh, no, we're seeing the NDP leading there, 9.5% and 14%. So Windsor, according to Polly, is um, still NDP territory. Oh, hold on a sec. No, yeah, 9.5% 9, 9 and 15%. So Windsor's... How about, how about Windsor Tecumseh? Let's see. Windsor Tecumseh, that's the one that's 14.9%. So Windsor mm -hmm. West is 9.5% and Windsor Tecumseh is almost 15% NDP. Okay. Let's bring up what is uh, almost always reliably a bellwether riding in the province of Ontario, meaning that they almost always vote for the winners, and that's Peterborough Kawartha, which went conservative last time. Uh, it's not 100% that they always vote for the winners, but it's pretty darn close to 100. What's that looking like right now? Well, right now the PCs are in the lead, but only by 0.9%. So this is one of the five most uh, hotly contested ridings in the province right now. So hmm. PCs leading, but it's statistically not significant. It's really a very tight race between the PCs and the Liberals. Way too close to call still. Okay, let's uh, let's move up. Let's go to Northern Ontario. Uh, Northern Ontario, I gather some of the, uh, you know, some of the contests here are uh, quite astonishing in as much as the parties that are traditionally fighting it out uh, have some company in those fights. What can you tell us about the fights up north? Uh, well, it, it depends on where you're at. So if you're Thunder Bay, you're Liberal, if you're uh, the Sioux, Sioux St. Marie is PC. Um, Timmins, NDP, so it's really quite varied. The North is, does not appear to be voting as a bloc. Let me ask you about two in particular. Uh, the Tories took Sault Ste. Marie by, I think, about 400 votes four years ago. They're leading right now again, is that what you said? Yeah, leading by 16%, so it's pretty significant. Ah, okay. Now check one other riding, Kiwetanum. It's one of the ridings that was added more recently in the hopes of getting Indigenous representation at Queen's Park. Uh, Sol Mamakwa won that uh, rather handily four years ago. I hear it's a fight this time. What are you seeing? Uh, NDP in the lead by 8.4% with the PCs in second place. PCs in second. That's interesting. Okay. That far up north. Uh, all right. Does Polly have anything to say about whether voters feel satisfied with all of the options they have on hand in this campaign? She does. <laughs> this is a loaded question, but it's definitely very clear, especially because of the low engagement, but also other factors that we're seeing, that um, this is not an election that has excited people. It's not an election where people feel that they're voting for something in particular. This is really an election where uh, the PCs have been in power for four years and people feel they've done a okay. Been an, I mean, it's mostly been dominated by COVID, so this is not something where people felt the government was... Uh, having a lot of control over things they were just managing. And and there's been a lot of cynicism, I would say, that we've seen in conversations here that governments don't have control to make life better. They just kind of are managing things. But that's probably a reflection of what we've been through in the last two years. There's no excitement in this election. And that's what's really, really different from other elections that we've seen. Usually there's ups and downs and peaks and especially when the election is called, we usually see a big peak of people talking about it, and that didn't happen this time. Well, a lack of excitement in an election campaign is almost always good for the party that's in power, so that would explain why the PCs, you have them on, on course to win another majority. We've got about 20 seconds left here for you to tell us, Aaron, whether there is much undecided vote yet left to pick over. Oh yeah, there's almost 30 ridings where it's, it's neck and neck. Um, and be between all three parties, so it depends on the writing. So definitely, there's, but it's really, we're choosing the official opposition at this point. It, it is a PC majority government. Who will be the main critic in keeping the, the government to account? Will that be the Liberals or the NDP? That's what's still to be decided. Okay, 10 seconds left. Tell me who's going to win Perry Sound Muskoka. Are the Greens going to have the breakthrough and win a second seat? No, <laughs> they're not. It's That's 25% ahead, and uh, I forget now. Let me just look quickly. Um, it is PC. PCs will beat the Greens in Paris now. You're going to join us here Thursday night for our Super Mammoth Marathon election coverage evening, and uh, we can chew over the numbers some more on that occasion. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Great. Thanks, Steve. See you Thursday. 
The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.